Hi everybody, good morning. This is Jean here. Um, this is Jean's Block Party 2018. We started in January of 2018. It is now the end of June. I have just come in from the outside. I've I finished photographing my quilt um, for our sampler quilt party. Um, I've I've just gotten I've gotten in touch with Jen. She is in the process of quilting her quilt. I've just finished, and the tutorial to follow uh, this little introduction. I have to apologize. Um, I did some some things out of whack. If if and if you if you watch the video, I was having a little bit of a hard time editing it. But I've explained everything. There's just and I've tried to explain the order that I've done it. You'll see what I've done today is we've. Last video we made our binding. This video I have bound my quilt. I show you how to do my curved corners with my straight grain with the fabric uh, fabric binding. And then my quilt is done, which I will be showing you um, outside in all of its glory. I'm so pleased. So I've sped up a few bits of the, the, vid the video to come. Um, bear with me. It makes a lot of sense if you if you know me. <laughs> Sometimes I don't make a lot of sense, but th but it, I get there in the end, right? I get there in the end. So um, I've put I've made my binding. I'll show you how to attach the the ends. I just jumped the gun a bit myself, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my goodness, I have to I have to attach the binding. You'll see what I mean. But I explain it pretty much. I go back and I explain it in um, in detail. So just follow along to the very end. I have some still photographs of my lovely quilt. I'm so thrilled. Um, I was quilting it on the diagonal. And oh, just one thing, I was quilting it on the diagonal. And I was saying, I think I repeat it, I repeat myself, but I was saying, I never use a walking foot and somebody pulled me up on it. Maybe it wouldn't have happened if you had used a walking foot. I found that quilting on the diagonal, it, it puckered a bit, I think, because we're, we're quilting on the bias. And I don't use a walking foot. Um, so I have quite a few little tucks in the top of my quilt. You know me. It's fine. It's beautiful. And a couple other people commented like, oh, I got puckers and I just stopped quilting it on the diagonal. That's fine. I actually, I, I did go back and I did stabilize horizontally and vertically my sashing to sort of you know shore up my quilt I'm going to talk to Jen about it but I got started and I, I finished it quilting it on the diagonal about every two inches so um, there's my finished quilt I'm thrilled about it I'm as I said before I'm going to have Jen back in the, my sewing room to show her show you her quilt and again just follow along with my tutorial it, it may be a little bit choppy and changing but you'll get the idea um, so anyway, there you go. That's my tutorials coming up um, to how to do the curved corners and the binding and finishing our quilt. Okay, thanks again, folks. See you later. Bye. Hi, everybody. Um, this is Jean here. Um, I'm going to be, this is Jean's Black Party 2018. Um, I'm going to be putting our binding on our quilt. My last video, you saw that I was making the binding um, and I was explaining that I was going to miter the corners of my quilt. I'm not going to do that. I, I, you know, I was saying in the last video, I'm staying true to myself. I like the curved corners. I'm going to curve my corners and Jen, I'm doing this for Jen. Jen said, oh, I like the curved corners. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, there are so many videos and tutorials on uh, binding, attaching binding and mitered corners. The one I like the most on YouTube is uh, Donna from Jordan Fabrics. Oh my word. She does a, actually it's machined binding, but I'm sure you could do, you could hand stitch it down if you wanted. She does a traditional method. She sews on the front. She turns around and, and machines it on the back, which is amazing. Um, but you could do that. I recommend looking up her. Um, again, millions of tutorials on bindings. This is how I do it. So I have my binding made. And as I was saying in my last video, um, my quilt really is nice and rectangle. The, the, the corners match up beautifully. It folds nicely into a nice rectangle. I don't have to square up, whatever that means. Um, my, my corners are good. And the, the reason I'm addressing that is I'm putting two corners together. I'm now going to create my curve. Now, by all means, um, let me just see. You could use 
a plate or a can of spray starch or something. I don't know. A ro oh no, not a rotary cutter. <laughs> You'd cut yourself. But like anything to achieve a gentle curve around your corner. I've been doing this a million years, so I can just eyeball a very gentle curve. You don't want a curve coming from here to here. You don't want a big slice off it. You just want a gentle curve. I'm going to be showing you how I do that, and I'll show you a bit cl up close. But I take a nice pair of sharp scissors. I put two corners together. I put the, the um, inside together so I can actually see what I'm doing on the outside. These corners match up beautifully. And for this, for a quilt, each quilt will tell you how big or how small it wants to curve. This quilt, I, f I found it's just more of a throw size, so it's more of a smaller, gentler curve. So I'm going to start, I'm going, and you do cut the corner off, no big deal. We've already stitched, we've, we've um, stay stitched or we've stabilized our quilt on the edge. I've, tr I've gone ahead and I've sort of trimmed up my all of the little little oh my hair all of the little um <laughs> my hair <laughs> excuse my appearance um all of the little you know bits and pieces i put my piece and i put my quilt together just perfect i start about three and a half inches from that corner i i just make a gentle curve just to like halfway through i pull this edge up so i get like the mirror image and there is my curve. There is my curve cut from one corner. Two, uh, two corners, I should say. A nice, gentle curve. Now, as you know, I do a binding that is on the straight of the grain, or the width of the fabric, which is the straight of the grain. It's fine. I've never had trouble, and I will show you how I ease my binding around this current corner. I, th my next two corners are perfectly square. I, I just put them together and this is easier because what I can do is I can take my what I've cut off and use that as a bit of a template so I know all four corners are going to be perfect. So I just put that right on the corner, I hold it with my fingers and I just cut out that template curve and there again is my four corners perfectly curved. Real simple. Now I'm going to put my camera up um, over here and I'm going to show you how I stitch on my binding. I always turn my quilt to the back side. I stitch my binding onto the back of my quilt. Doesn't matter which side you go. I sometimes do the long side, so it doesn't really matter. I will start my binding about, get away, get these little threads away. Um, I will start my binding about, I don't know, about 15 or 16 inches from one corner of my quilt. Um, but I'm going to take you, oh, I'm going to go over to my camera, uh, my sewing machine with my camera, and I'll show you what I'm going to do now. Okay. I'm over here at my machine. Hopefully I can do this because the tripod's right in my lap. <laughs> um, what I've done is I've taken my binding. I just have it sort of to the side. I've rolled it up here. I've just put it to the side with, with a, you know, a little bit on my lap here. What I've done is here's the top of w w one edge of my quilt. Uh, the, 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 yeah, the, up here. And I've come down maybe 12, 15 inches. I've left the tail, maybe, maybe a little bit more actually. I've left a tail of about six or seven inches behind my needle. I'm putting the raw edges of my binding, which has been folded together, on the raw edge, on the outside raw edge of my quilt. Now it's very important that you just sort of lay your, you keep everything sort of loose. You, let, you, you just want to lay your binding on your quilt edge. You don't want to like pull it. You want to lay your binding nice and loose and it's very very important that you keep your quilt. How many times do I have to tell you? I'm like a bad record but you keep your binding and your needle right in front of your body here and it just makes it so much easier. So raw edges to the raw edge. 
and then I'm stitching about a quarter of an inch, perhaps, perhaps just a little bit, just maybe a hair um, larger than a quarter of an inch. Remember, we've stitched our edging, so I just, well, these, this is a bit thread, this is a bit um, ravelly thread, so I'm just stitching my binding on there. Go slow. Get all of your, oh, it's very ravelly. Um, just right through all the, all of the layers, putting raw edges together. I'll come back and I'll trim all this. I'm not tugging, I'm just laying it gently. I'm, I'm having it right in front of me. There's a seam. That's fine. Remember, I had a straight seam. You guys are going to have probably a biased seam. Now, about, here's our curve. All right, let me just move that slightly. Yeah, here's our curve that's coming up. Now, what I want you to do is very, very ge gently, almost, almost pushing it back, the pu almost pushing the binding away back from you. What the purpose is, so don't pull it because your, your, your corner will bow and it will never lay flat. Our purpose here is to keep this binding ever so loose around this corner, about five inches from the corner. If there was a corner here, there's a curve here, remember? We just want to keep our binding ever so loose. I use these, this bit of my fingers, if you can see. I sort of hold it there, and I, I'm almost pushing the binding back underneath the needle, just gently. Go slowly. I've not made a tuck or anything, but I'm keeping it so loose and easing it. This is called easing. Remember, this is cut on the straight of grain. It's not a bias, but I'm just easing it. And you can do this bite by bite, making sure you keep, it would be, it would, uh, your, your, your seam like a quarter of an inch. It would be very easy to sort of come wide. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure you keep your fabric, your binding, right on that curve. Go slowly, bite by bite. Do not pull, almost push it under the presser foot. I'm sorry if my hands are in the way. I have to, I have to even hold it myself. Bite by bite. I'm coming around. Bite by bite. And I'm just easing. Can you see that? I'm just easing that around. And then you want to maybe put your presser foot up and adjust yourself. If you do get a tuck, that's okay, because that will be on the inside of your binding. But just ease that around. Ease, ease, ease. That's the whole, that's the whole point of this curved corner. And we're coming into the straightaway. We still just want to lay this, you just want to lay this on your quilt top. Now I can go on the straight away and I can go straight down just not pulling. That's the whole point. You just want to have this ever so loose around your corner. That's the whole point. Bite by bite. Go real slow. Hold it with your fingers so that the edges are together. Because this could get messed up. You could sort of lose this and it sort of could come up here. You don't want that. You want these edges on your corners to stay together. That's why I stabilize it. I sort of scratch it over so it's nice and bite by bite around this curve. Go slowly. Maybe you want to shift your, put your presser foot up bite by bite. Keep 
keeping that quarter inch. Coming down again to the straightaway. See how that's fluffing up and almost ruffling you because we're easing that. And you will see how that turns out. Keep it nice. Oh, and I, I have that much left. I told you to cut about seven of them. I have a, I have a little bit left. That's fine. Better, uh, well, you know me. Err on the cautious side. But if, by all means, if you want to cut to the to the inch, you can. Well, with, with and allowing yourself about ten inches. So I'm pushing this under. I'm easing this piece. You see how I'm just doing it, stitch by stitch, bite by bite, right around that corner. In the edges together. Pardon me if my hands are in the way. Now, here's my edge here. Is that in the frame? Yeah, here's my edge here, and here's my tail here. I'm going to sew down. I'm going to sew down to about. I'm going to keep about seven inches or so in between my tail here and my tail here, and then I'm going to back stitch this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I have plenty of binding. I'm going to cut I'm going to cut like that's tons, but I'm going to cut it off like down here. I want to make sure that's all I have left. I don't have that much left over. So I have these two long tails of binding. Now, I'm just going to trim these up. I'm going to trim up these um these ravels here and then I'm going to show you what we do these long pieces of binding here right and we have the raw edges so what you're wanting to do is with with um you have about about eight or ten inches what I do I get my scissors I'm gonna just trim this piece off to about there okay just lay that that flat now this is right in front of me and the reason I do this, and then, uh, and again, I'm going to be showing you how to do yours on the bias. I wouldn't be doing my stripe. My stripe's going to end up wonky, as you'll see. But I'm going to show you how to do to finish a binding because you probably don't use um, striped bindings. We've already addressed that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a pin. I'm going to just lay that gently. I'm just going to put a pin there, just to hold that binding there. Now I'm going to take this long edge. And I'm going to lay that down right on top of that binding. Oh, there's a seam. I can probably get rid of that seam. That's funny, that. So now, with an extra piece of binding, which I know is two and a quarter inches wide, I'm going to lay that right, right on, right on that seam. <laughs> Look at that. I'm going to cut off that seam. That's good. So I'm just going to lay that. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm laying this top piece on there. And I'm lining this edge of the binding up with this edge of this binding down here, through it. So I got, I'm just going to see, there's the binding. I know this is two and a quarter inches to there. I'm just going to just slide it over just a hair there. So I'm going to cut my binding. But you have to be brave for this part. I'm going to cut this piece right there. Okay, now, oh shush, now I'm going to take this pin out and we're going to attach, I'm just going to bring this around, we're going to attach our binding strip exactly like we did when you were attaching it before, when you were making your long strips. You're going to pull this one out like this, remember, it goes this way, 
and then with the right sides together this way so to pull this up you might want to allow yourself a little bit more you're going to you're going to stitch you might want to pin this you're going to stitch on the diagonal just like we did attaching our binding our strips together you're going to stitch from this seam there or that point there down to this corner here remember now i'm going to just back stitch a little bit i'm just going to, if you want to mark this with a pen you can but i'm just going to stitch a straight line right down to that corner bit there just like we attached our binding strips together and right off take my pins out trim up my threads now you want to make sure there you go you want to make sure that it fits before you actually trim anything now i know you see that i know i can finish sewing that binding on because it's, it is really nice so what i can do is i can pull it out and i can trim that off to a quarter of an inch and just finger press that strip that binding strip open just like we did when you were constructing the binding now because it's sort of on the fold line I can just pull it taut look and there I go back to my stitching where I stitched it on and I can just stitch on my bias seamed joined edges a little few tucks there and there you go now what see now that's a little bit wonky but when i go to finish up now see now i was i was binding my edge well now there's my bound there's my edges all all together so now i can just finish you probably want to do that before you even stitch the um i'll address that at the beginning of the video you probably want to do that as a, as part of uh you know finishing attaching your binding but i sometimes do it this way just as long as i leave you know 15 or so inches of of tail that's why you leave the tail there so you can do it either way but there's my bias seam so you'll have a bias seam tuck all of these frays making sure my quilt's nice and straight I'm coming down I'm gonna do this corner tuck that all in and remember I'm gonna manipulate this corner where I want it to go where I think I want it to go remember and then just ease that fabric around so i'll just finish this up and then our quilt will be bound I, i've actually just started and i just wanted to show you what this looks like because some people are like what you know it's machine stitch well i'm cool with that I, I got better things to do than my time. Uh, if you like hand stitching, by all means, knock yourself out. Um, I've stitched onto the back. I've turned it to the front. And I'm starting to stitch just, uh, hopefully you can see that, just right next to that folded edge. And I really make sure that I have all of this binding, I have all of the edge there tucked right in to that binding. So my quilt edge is right to the end it's filling that binding you don't want some like you know like you know like let loose stuff there you want your quilt binding that's why i do it at two and a quarter because i make sure that my binding is nice and thick filled with the edge of my quilt so i've stitched along I've, i'm pretty good now people say well, what does the back look like it's machine stitched well there you go there is my machine stitching Maybe hopefully you can see it right next to the binding there. 
Oh, sometimes it'll be a bit wobbly or whatever. I, it's fine. I've said it a million times. My machine stitch is, is stronger than my hand stitching will ever be. So what I'm doing here, hopefully you can see, yeah. I'm doing, I'm just tugging gently. I'm putting all of this, all of the frayed bits inside. I'm tugging gently, making sure this is folded right over. It's a bit more than a quarter of an inch. And I'm going slowly. I'm just watching that needle just go right to the edge of my binding, catching it. It does take a steady hand and a straight stitch. But as you can see, it's a nice, it's a nice straight stitch that's caught my binding. Now I'm coming to my corner, right? Let me just switch this around here. Uh, hopefully you can see this corner edge. Um, yeah, so I'm coming to my corner. Now I, my machine, my quilt is right in front of me. Remember, remember, my quilt's right in front of me. What I want to do is I want to just gently take that corner curve and just gently, just tug it, ever so gently, a couple inches before in the curve and a couple inches after, and just sort of push it where you want it to go. See that? Now that's where I want my, cor my curve to go. Now remember, this isn't a bias, but this is a gentle curve. So I'm coming up to it. I'm just sort of making making it aware of my curve of what I intend to do with it when I get there. So it's right in front of me. Everything is straight. This is straight here. This is straight right in front of me. I'm going ever so slowly. Again, my fingers holding it there, pushing it right in, encapsulating the entire quilt edge right to this edge. Go very slowly. This hand is holding this quilt nice and straight. This fi these fingers are holding exactly in the position that I want my binding to go. And then my needle will follow along to where my fingers are. Just bite by bite, bite. Now, now my fingers are holding the binding. Bite by bite, bite. Now this is where you might want to needle down. And just lift your, just lift it slightly. Just lift your presser foot to get where your needle wants to go. Might want to needle down. Just ease that stitch by stitch. Right on the edge, needle down. Press her foot up. Needle down. You're wanting to put your... Where's that piece of fabric going? You're stitching right along the edge. You've made the corner there. You're not done yet. Don't don't be pulling, don't be yanking, or you're going to have a, a curve to your quilt end, your corner. Still not quite straight. You can feel it. You can just feel it. How, what do I always say? Let the fabric tell you where it wants to go. And there you go. On to my, let me just get out of this cur curve here. Straighten this all up. Get your, get your, so important, so important that you're, your fabric is right in front of you where you want your binding to go my fingers here are holding my binding and then I put needle down and then I go back and see what I've done ah! <laughs> there you go curved binding without bias tape without bias uh, fabric it's just on a gentle curve. Oh, I did. I just, oh, I see that. I just didn't catch that. Oh, I did actually, but it's a little bit, to, but it's a bit, bit close. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm just going to top stitch that. I don't want that. There's just one or two stitches that are just slightly too close to the edge. I'll just go back and I'll just catch that a little. It happens. It happens along the straightaway. So you can go back 
and then just gently tug fill your binding very important go slow fill your binding with a nice bit of get all of that rubbish in there here now I'm coming to a seam now your seam will be mine's a bit of a lump that's fine your seam will be distributed remember you'll have the bias seam so you have one seam up there and you have one seam down here so it's nice and flat because of my stripe I have a little bit of a lump there uh, that's I'm um, fine with that I love stripe bindings I think they're so happy so I come down everything's right in front of me I'm gently tugging it filling my binding with the edge of the quilt Pulling it out. I'm not pulling it towards me. I'm pulling it out. Tucking all of those frayed bits in. Those are frayed bits. i got to cut them off. Pull it out. Again, I'm holding this part of my quilt nice and taut I'm just pulling this along so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to speed up this part of the video and then when I get to the corner I'll show you again what I'm going to do. Bite by bite. Stitch by stitch. If you have to lift up your presser foot, by all means, take bite by bite. Just one or two stitches to get around that corner. You're not pulling anything because you don't want this to get pulled out of shape. You're easing that around the corner and then stitching it down. is to put your needle down, press your foot up, and just readjust a hair. Needle down, press your foot up. And there's, I like this. I mean, I'm not, I'm not an idiot, but I, 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 I could miter corners. I have done it before. I love the look of a curved corner myself. I, I love it a lot of people don't it's 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 absolute preference um i like my curved corner there's a there's a started and here is where I'll end. Just join up that stitching. Do a little back stitch. And there we have finished our quilts. With four bound corners so what do you think what do you think you're going to be doing the bias you just want to check when you go back on yourself you want to check there was that little bit that I just wanted to catch on that one corner there I'll just go back and I'll just take a few little bites there to, to, um, to catch that but you just want to check that your stitching is fairly uniform 
you are going to see your stitching. That's the, that's the nature of the beast here. But you can see that you're, if you don't stretch, you're not pulling anything, your, your corners are going to lay down really nice and flat. So there you go. So here, folks, is my finished quilt. Look at that. Six months worth of working on it, block by block, week by week. Uh, 12 inch, 12 inch finished blocks, sampler blocks, there are 20 of them, 20 weeks. We learned all sorts of techniques. I'm showing you my quilt because I've finished it, I've finished binding it. Now, um, as you know, this journey was all about my friend Jen. She's not um, finished her quilt yet. Um, I don't know where quite she is. I've just spoke to her a few days ago. I think she's um, in the process of quilting it. We decided on the diagonal quilting pattern. Then I said I didn't love, but actually having seen it done now, it's really, really quite effective. Um, I, I, I really quite love this quilt. Um, I bound it with the blue, the, the pretty blue white stripe. I love blue and I like striped bindings, as you know. I, I bind a lot of my quilts in, in striped. I think it just makes a happy touch. And of course I curved my corners. People are like, why? And I curved my corners. <laughs> as this video shows you how I curve my corners. I like curved corners. Thanks folks. <laughs> so here's my finished quilt. I think it's delightful. Again, the, um, the fabric line is from Moda called Handmade. A very pretty, pretty uh, fabric line. Not my, uh, not my striped binding isn't. Uh, the, my, the, the backing is. Again, I've done it, the red, the red splash of red on the, on the floral print, or the little um, stylized print on the backing that goes with the fabric line. There's my favorite block right there. Love that block. Love that block. I do love the quilting. So there's my quilt. I will have Jen in my sewing room when she's done her quilt. We have lots of projects for the summer. I won't be able to put so many um, videos up this summertime because we have parties and we have some conventions we're going to attend. Um, and we have lots lots going on. I have a wedding coming up in July. So bear with me. We, um, I, I have not forgotten about our um, our, my bookcase quilt. You're, you're busy collecting uh, images for that, hopefully. So I've not forgotten that tutorial, uh, but I have some other things going. We're going to be doing our deer head, Jen and I, more of a craft project. I have to figure out how we're going to do that. We got kindly sent some real deer antlers. Fantastic. I will be addressing that. I also have a product review coming up. So quite a few things coming up this summertime. I don't know when though, but this folks is my finished, my finished sampler quilt. Jean's quilt party, Jean's block party 2018. I will be showing you Jen's and all of her glory when she finishes it. That will be so exciting. This is about my 400th quilt. <laughs> It'll be Jen's first quilt. And she has done a magnificent job. We can't, can't wait to, for, to, to see it all finished and it's all of its glory. And everybody who has participated, if you would please send us photographs of your finished quilts, all quilted, uh, perhaps around your body or around sitting at the television or on your bed or wherever on your porch swing or wherever you have your quilts. Let's it come alive and let's share because we've all done this. We've done spent six months of our time making this lovely quilt. They're all completely different. Beautiful fabric choices, some in black, uh, some navy shabby chic, some brilliant, lots of batiks. Uh, Jen and I have gone very safe with a lot of white in our quilt. Everybody's quilt looks different and everybody's quilt is their own and it's just wonderful. Thank you so much for following along with me. Jean's Block Party 2018, the finished product. Jen's is to come. We're all excited to see Jen's final quilt. Okay, thanks folks. Bye.